welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for the, our live reaction for the patch 114 notes 114. Uh, this patch is going to be live tomorrow. The the notes just came out a little bit ago while we were playing Darius Yasuo, while we were playing that deck. Um, but I haven't read through these at all. I don't know what any of these changes are or anything. Um, it looks like there's a lot of changes according to Twitch chat. So let's see what we got. We got a lot of stuff here. All right, so balance, balance Patch 114 brings with it an all-new experimental lab, the de debut of Friend Spectacle, Spectate, that makes more sense, Friend Spectate, sorry, <laughs> and a hefty set of balance uh, changes. So um, here's a metagame snapshot that starts off with it. Um, okay, so we're going to start periodically sharing some of the metagame data that we use to inform our balance updates over time with a few key goals in doing so. So we're gonna provide more visibility on the overall metagame framework within which we decide on balance changes and highlight the variety of competitive strategies available to explore at any given time and some, share some cool deck ideas. Okay, so they are used in Platinum, Diamond, and Masters. Um, snapshot data includes only the most played meta decks. This means the play rates below should read as among meta decks, while the win rates are inclusive of all decks. Okay, so they're not even... Okay. Okay. And so they have deck codes here. So basically they're showing that Ionia plus Targon with Lisa and Zed... Um, had an 11.13% play rate among these decks, not just overall. So like these play rates are going to be a little higher than, than just overall. Cause they're only the play rates, um, the play rates among the meta decks. Okay. So they're just kind of telling us that stuff. So cool information if you want to, you know, kind of pause and, and read through that. I'm going to just kind of go on, though. All right, so anyway, some uh, card updates. So this is what we're really interested in. So this patch focuses mostly on improvements to several foundation set champions, small buffs, both direct and indirect, to call the mountain champions that need some help, and adjustment to some followers. All right, what do we got? Lucian. Lucian's level two now can can now trigger the same round as leveling up. Okay, so now you can have you can have Lucian leveled up, and then each round the first time an ally dies. Okay, so that's that's definitely going to be a buff to Lucian. Um, it doesn't uh, doesn't change the card too much, but that that's something that does come up sometimes when you're playing Lucian decks. That you know you'll you will level up your Lucian, but then you have to wait till the the next turn. So now um, you can level up a Lucian, and then you can have things like more attackers like attack after a Lucian. That you you can try to have something else die afterwards, or use like a glimpse beyond after afterwards and get that rally right away. Um. Yeah, I think that's just a good change. I think that's, um, yeah, I'm, fine. I'm definitely fine with that change. I like Lucian decks. Lucian decks are fun. Um, you know, it doesn't move the needle a ton, but I mean, that's, yeah, perfectly reasonable. All right, Shivana is now going to be a 4-4. Okay, so now Shivana is going to be a 4-4 four, four mana 4-4. Four, four. Um, I think that's, that's yeah, that's, that's a big buff for Shivana, honestly, because a big thing was like her blocking... Like being at three four was awkward a lot of times with attacking and attacking in as a four five is perfectly fine. But now Shivana on turn four attacking is going to be a five five. That's going to be pretty big. Um, so that's a that's a that's a big buff honestly. And so yeah, I, I'm again a big fan of that. Like I I like playing Lucian and Shivana decks. And so yeah, I think th these are both good changes. You know, neither neither of those champions are like setting the world on fire, even though Shivana is acting like. She said the world on fire over here. Um, yeah, so that's uh, that's pretty good. All right, and then, yeah, you know, the level two is just 
the same kind of thing. So, all right, so two for two, doing good. What else we got? We got Vladimir. All right, so what's the new Vladimir going to be? All right, so before reading like what this Vladimir is going to be, basically what, what I wanted to say is I, I am really glad that they're buffing Vladimir. At least that's what I'm assuming they're going to do. And, you know, I love playing Vladimir decks. I think Vladimir is really fun. Now, with that being said, I do think that Noxus aggro is just a really strong uh, region and that I, I am just kind of worried in general that if you have a Vladimir that's really good, it could warp the metagame. Um, as we saw with like Lee Sin turning in from nothing to warping the metagame. I'm just saying that that's a possibility. Like remember when we had Noxus with Harrowing and that was really good. Like imagine that deck with a great Vladimir. That kind of stuff. So I'm just saying that just in general, um, you know, but let's see what it says now. <clears throat> All right, so the uh, the new text is attack for each attacking ally on my right. Deal one to it and the one to the enemy nexus. Um, so, okay, so the level up only takes five instead of six. And then it only does the attacking allies on the right. So that's actually a really good buff. So, okay, so at first I was thinking, well, that's not as good because then you, you know, like then you have to attack with Vladimir first. But actually that makes sense where when you have like the two, like Noxus has a bunch of really good two ones, right? Like the one mana two ones and stuff like that. Or, you know, like you're dealing other damage. So you end up with one health units that you want to attack with, but you don't want them to die to the Vladimir ability. So you can put those units on the left, right? Like you can, you can attack with like your two one mana two ones first and then attack with Vladimir and then attack with your other ones on the right. And then boom, you're going to do the one damage to those on the right. So you get to pick and choose how you align that and what you want to deal damage to. That's a that's a good buff right there. Um, I, I like that. That's that's good. And so yeah, so now now multiple Vladimir's will trigger off of each other now with like Vladimir and Harrowing. That that wasn't something that happened before. Um, all right, level two still gains regeneration. So they didn't buff Vladimir that much. You know, like I was, I was kind of thinking that they're gonna buff Vladimir a bunch. Like whenever they took Brom, whenever they took Lee Sin, and just they just completely like reworked those cards and buffed them a whole bunch. That's why I was thinking maybe that they would do with Vladimir. They really didn't change Vladimir that much, but I think that that's a, a good solid change. Make him a little easier to level up, and then also like that attack on the right. That's that's nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely excited to play some more Vladimir. Um, yeah, that's that's a good change. All right, Trundle, yes. Trundle down to being a 4-5. Yes, Trundle was way too effective. I like that. We've seen that before. Like, this is not the first time that they put a 5-mana, really good champion that, that effectively took 6 power to kill. Remember whenever they had Vi, where Vi was 5 health with, um, with Tough, and they saw that that was just way too difficult to kill the Vi, and so... Um, change Vi to be four health with the top. I like this with, you know, the six health with regeneration. It was just way too difficult to kill Trundle. I like that this is going to go down to five health. I like that. Um, okay. And now Ice Pillar go down to six health. That's also a good change. Good. Ice Pillar, again, way too difficult to kill. Um, okay, good. So just little nerfs to Trundle. I like that. Um, you know, Trundle... Uh, I think this is a good place to start. It's not like, you know, it's not completely killing Trundle. And that's that's why they do a really good job. You know, like Trundle's still going to be really strong, most likely. And so just doing like little nerfs to it. Um, and then, you know, like we'll see where, where they'd go. You'd, you'd prefer Trundle to be a 3-6? Um, which, you know, 3-6 three, six, three, six could be a thing also. We'll see. All right, Ezreal. Uh, what? They're changing Ezreal. You've targeted 10 to targeting 6? So Ezreal's just always leveled up. You 6? You level that up like that. So, okay, so they just, they just said that they just want Ezreal just to be leveled up all the time? You have le That's like leveled up on turn 3. I mean, not that early, obviously, but basically it's just always leveled up. Okay, so they're changing the leveled up. So now, 
So now each spell only does one damage, which is what I said that it should have been doing a long time ago. But I guess they're still going to keep it where it's two damage if you're targeting the enemy. If I targeted an enemy, deal two to the enemy nexus instead. So if you keep targeting enemies, then you get an additional bonus. But then Ezreal's level up is only doing one damage. This is still a pretty big buff, I think, to Ezreal, just to have to have leveled up Ezreal incredibly easily. And even if you're only doing one damage for each spell, you're still putting out that leveled up Ezreal much, much faster. Um, yeah, that's that's a that's a that's a good buff for Ezreal. And you know you can still yeah like that's that's a good buff for Ezreal. Um, I don't love this change myself. I. What I've said that they should have Ezreal be this is this is what this is what I've thought for like a long time. This is like before they changed Ezreal and everything. I think it should should I thought the eight the eight was a really good number and that it should just do one damage. That's what I've thought. So like this is a little stronger. This is six and it just does one and then you know maybe two. But this was back you know before whenever Karma Ezreal was like a really big deck and everything. That's that's what I thought it should be is just you know it should just do one damage to the enemy nexus, not two. Um. All right, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see. You know, Ezreal's not seeing a bunch of play right now. Um, the ten, the ten was really difficult. Um, so now we're gonna have a lot more leveled up Ezreals. So uh, get some more cooling strikes up in here. All right, let's see. Jinx level two can now trigger the same round as leveling up. Okay, that's that's a big thing for Jinx. And so now, yeah, each round, the first time that you empty your hand, create a super mega death rocket in hand. Um, so if you okay so if you play a jinx with an empty hand and she levels up she won't create the super mega death rocket right away so you have to you'll have to empty your hand so it's the first time you empty your hand so jinx has to see you empty your hand so you'd have to like play jinx with an empty hand and then draw a card and then get rid of that card which that's possible um Okay, so a little change there for Jinx. I mean, that that's again just just a, a very very slight upgrade. That's not going to happen that often, but it's more likely to happen. Um, like, let's see, no, because you you'll have to level up Jinx first and then empty your hand again. I, that doesn't happen hardly at all, actually. Come to think of it, yeah, uh, that can happen with like rummages, right? Like if you play Jinx that's not leveled up. And you play something like, or if you just have like a Jinx on board that's not leveled up, and you play like an Augmented Experimenter, for example, that that levels up your Jinx and puts more cards in hand, and then it puts like a Rummage or two in hand, and that you maybe you play something else, and then you play Rummage, you know, like that kind of stuff. Like that's that's how that could help. But uh... all right, ooh, Tarek skin a buff. What do we got? Ooh, Tarek going to a three four. Okay, I like it. Another card that I really enjoy playing, but isn't really that, you know, like, isn't that, like, meta or anything. Like, it's not, like, that that powerful or taking over the meta game. So, yeah, I like it. We'll make 3-4 Tarek. That's a great change. Yeah, we get some more Tarek Vlad. I like it. All right, so that's all the champions there. Okay. All, all pretty good changes. I, I'm not... I, I don't love the Ezreal change, but also I'm not really an Ezreal player. So, you know, people that do play Ezreal probably really love this change. Um, I just, I don't know. That six is just so easy to level up. All the rest of them I like. Um, you know, like, I, I really like playing Lucian, Shivana, Vladimir. They were all buffed. and But they are buffed slightly, right? And, like, not, and Tarek, you know, all those. They weren't buffed that much. You know, they weren't... It's not like... Like, these aren't Braum and Lee Sin changes. Like, where they just completely change the card and make it incredibly better. You know, like, where they take Braum uh, from being an 05. And then they're like, you know what? Let's start Let's start having you make... Uh, let's, like, reduce your costs and start making you... Or, I don't... What, whatever they did with Braum. I guess they added the cost. But then they started having Braum... They gave Braum power and started making it 3 threes. Like, you know, they did, like, multiple things to buff it. You know, Lee Sin, they reduced the cost quite a bit and uh buff that thing um so uh um i don't know anything about that make but please don't use that language in the chat 
Uh, yeah. So, yeah, Ezreal's only going to need six now, but Ezreal will only do one damage to the enemy Nexus. Yeah, so Ezreal's kind of getting leasened. Yes. And so that's why I'm worried about this one. I don't like this change as much, because, yes, this is kind of getting leasened. Um... All right, uh, let's see. So our followers and spells, Tiana Crown Guard now going to be an 8-mana eight 8-8. Eight, eight. I think that that's, that's good. It kind of fits like the other 8-drops. Um, you know, that, that's good. Give give Demacia, you know, just... In, it, it doesn't change this card very much, right? But it, it increases the power just a little bit. And it, when you look at like the 8-mana cards in Bilgewater and Noxus, and then like your, your big stuff in Shadow Isles... That's the thing you really want. You want your regions to be balanced, not only in the early game, but then also in the late game. And Demacia, uh, you know, just make this a little bit better. Try to get this a little bit closer to, you know, like when you still comparing this to like Captain Farron, it's not really close, but it's it's still closer to Captain Farron, Leviathan, Riptide Rex, that kind of stuff. Yes, weird. That's this is a change that I was saying they should make. Okay, that's a good one. Put Weirding Stones back to being an O3. They did increase the power of mana ram strategies too much. I like I like this change to Trundle and Weirding Stones. I like it. Again, again, this is about uh, this is about balancing the late game in the different regions. And Freljord's uh, late game was not is not only too powerful because of Field of Rush, but it's also too easy to get to with Weirding Stones, Trundle, and so yeah, I like I like both those changes. Yes, Trundle was nerfed just slightly. Just the it one health. It has one less health. So instead of being a 4-6, it's a 4-5 now. Fuzzy Caretaker. Okay, this card's changed. Um, now it's going to be a 3-cost card instead of 4-cost card, which that's good because 4-cost, four 4-cost four it was just, um, it was in a bad spot because at 4, like I, I really want to play Fey Guide and I really want to play Shen. And, you know, if we want to play Swole Squirrel also, it's just too many fours. Fuzzy Caretaker pushed out the door. Just couldn't play the card. So now at three cost, okay, now you have Lulu. But then you're looking at, like, if you're playing Targon, you have Mentor the Stones. You know, maybe, but that, that card's not, you know, like, so you're looking at not having, like, a lot of other great options. You know, like, maybe, like, a River Shaper. But, you know, now you can actually talk about Fuzzy Caretaker compared to the other three cost options. So now it's just going to be a 3-mana three 3-2 three with the different support stuff. That's better. You know, before it, before Fuzzy Caretaker really wasn't playable. And now maybe it will be. Maybe it still won't. We don't know yet. But at least this, this gives it a shot. All right, Mina, what do we got? Um, okay, Mina's now a 7-6 instead of a 6-5 and has Quick Attack. I like it. It's, again, balance the late game in the different regions. Smart change. So, you know, give give Ionia a little bit better late game to kind of compare, you know, compare your, your Mina Swiftfoot with your Leviathan, Captain Farron, Riptide Rex, that kind of stuff. Feel the Rush is still ridiculous. Hopefully we get to feel the Rush. Um, but, yeah, I like it. Um, you know, 6-5 was, like, pretty easy to kill you know, with just like two blockers and stuff, but you know, now seven, you know, now quick attack with a seven, six plus you, you would think Mina Swiftfoot should have quick attack, right? Like that just, that just makes sense. Like flavor wise and everything. So that just makes sense. Give her a keyword. All right. Funsmith going down to a four mana one, three. I would, I would still prefer this. Well, I don't know. I was thinking it was going to like change it to be a five mana two, four to just kind of fit with Neverglade collector. Because, like, a 1-3, like, a 1-3 just can't ever attack or block. I don't even know if this is an upgrade, honestly. I guess it's an upgrade, because it costs 4, and all you're doing is reducing the power of 1. But there's such a big difference between 1 power and 2 power. We saw this with War Chefs, Shadow Assassin. You just can't play things with 1 power. Just give it, just make it a 5-mana 2-4. Or just make it a 2, just keep it a 2-3 and make it cost 4. I don't think that if they would just keep it a 2-3 and make it cost 4 instead of 5, that that's going to just, like, you know, ruin the game or anything. Just keep it a 2-3 stuff. Yeah, this is really disappointing. This is supposed to be PNZ's buff. This is really, really disappointing. What's up, Muffin Chucker? Thank you so much, Muffin, for these, uh, our second sub of the day, second month for that resub. Thank you very much. Um... 
Awesome. Says ne never failed to impress with how much cool stuff you try. Well, thank you very much. Said Fun Smith never blocks your attacks. I mean, well, sometimes you have to though. You like you don't like you know, just think of Neverglade Collector. Neverglade Collector. Sometimes you attack with it. Sometimes you block with it. You need cards that can. A one three you just can't. Why does it have to have one power? I don't. I don't like this change. I think that they could have could have made this change better. I think that a five mana two four would be better. Um. I could be wrong about this, you know, like maybe, maybe this would be great. I mean, four mana does, PNZ does have other good four mana cards. They do, like that's, that's a spot that, that actually is kind of filled the curve on, on PNZ with, you know, like your clump of wumps and uh, things like that, back alley bar keep and um, even that four mana epic's not bad that has uh, last breath, make another epic. Um, yeah, just, I've, I feel like PNZ, you know, does need a buff, and I'm glad they're trying, but I think they could have done better. Could have done better. Um, yeah, maybe, yeah, so I guess, are they going to try to do, like, Funsmith Ezreal? Is, are they trying to, to, to have that be a thing? With your one threes and so like so your Ezreal your Ezreal levels up super fast and now it only does one but with Funsmith it will start doing two maybe Black Spear okay Black Spear is gonna do four damage now which makes sense I mean when you compare Black Spear to Ravenous Flock. Black Spear is harder to turn on and dealt less damage and cost more mana. <laughs> right? So, like, Black Spear compared to Ravenous Flock is pretty silly. So now Black Spear is doing four. Perfectly fine. Shadow Isles, Shadow Isles doesn't really need this, right? Like, Shadow Isles already has great removal everywhere and is already a, a really strong region. Um, I mean, it's it's nice. You know, might, might as well, I guess. But, you know compared to like a region that's really struggling like pnz getting they they just take like this random rare that doesn't see any play at all and they're like you know what we'll reduce its cost by one all right other region okay shadow isles you're doing great you're seeing play all over the place you know maybe you know like one of the very most played regions all right we're gonna take a good removal spell and we're gonna make it better <laughs> you know it's, it's a little different Ooh, riptide rex finally touched let's see what Oh, it just makes one less cannon barrage, and it's a 6-4. Okay, so it didn't change whatsoever. <laughs> it's... I mean, obviously it changed, but, you know, basically not at all. Um, it's still the it's still the most powerful 8-drop, right? That's what I mean. Um, yeah, it is a small change. It's again, it's about, you know, again, uh, we're getting closer though, you know, with like the, you know, with just like the very small buff with the Demacia and the Ionia 8 drop, the very small nerf with this 8 drop. We're getting closer to leveling the top end of the regions closer. So I can't, can't complain about that, but yeah, this is, this is definitely necessary. Um, this Riptide Rex is, is a more reasonable card than the, the previous Riptide Rex. So I'm not saying that I'm against this change. Um, I would much rather Feel the Rush be nerfed than this, though. We'll see if we get to Feel the Rush. Alright, Eclipse Dragon. Looks like we're doing the, the top end still. Uh, so now the top end of Targon. Eclipse Dragon being a 7-7. Seven, seven. Wow, Eclipse Dragon was already awesome. Um, I guess they're saying their stats were underwhelming, I, I guess, but Eclipse Dragon was already awesome. So now we're going to have a 7-mana seven 7-7 seven, seven drawing two cards or making your uh, Rillian Soul come out right away. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought Eclipse Dragon was a great card before. Obviously, this just makes it a lot better, and so that's good. Um... Yeah, that's that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good go get it. <laughs> yeah, go get it is actually pretty good with that. Um, 
Okay, this is the new lap. So that's all the card changes. So nothing to nothing to the KDA cards. That's definitely the thing that I'm most disappointed about. I think that Feel the Rush is too powerful, and I think that Feel the Rush needs to be nerfed. That's if I had to choose one card coming into this to nerf, I would have chosen Feel the Rush. Um, but at least with Trundle and Weirding Stones being a little less powerful, that that'll hurt Feel the Rush a little bit. Um. Yeah, uh, yeah, Scouts, yes, while Scouts' misfortune were not touched at all, I think that that's okay. I think that um, some of these cards, like like Vladimir, Tarek, um, some of those mid-range cards, Vladimir, Tarek, Shivana, the buffing of those, like, those are all cards that are good against Scouts, like, right? Like, I, I, I like, like, I think that I'm pretty confident in playing, like, Shivana decks, Vladimir decks, Tarek decks against Scout decks. And so, like, the buffing of those champions, um, and if people are playing those champions more, that can hurt scouts. They couldn't have had the changes in, because the patches need to be in the Apple Store two weeks in advance. They didn't have any gameplay info on the KDA cards just yet. Okay, that makes sense. All right, so the new lab is going to do some stuff with some even and odds. Um, what does it say? With the right combination of variables, anything can happen. Perform one of four experiments by crafting a deck with unique constraints or choose one of Heimer's pre-made decks. So you can make a deck that has all even, all odd, or no followers, or all common. Um, that no followers is going to be annoying. You know, you just play like, you know, Feel the Rush Ramp <laughs> or... Uh, you know, something like that. Like there, there's definitely good like control decks and ramp decks that you can play with no followers. So that's not really um, a, that much of a a thing. Yeah, like that's that's probably going to be the best version out of all all, all four of these. And then because you also just get free followers in hand, that's just going to be the best. I like that all common though. That's actually pretty cool. Round seven onwards, you just create leveled up champions in hand. Okay, you can make a sweet all common deck for sure. That's that that's pretty sweet. You can make like a good aggro all common deck. There's lots of great commons everywhere. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Gauntlet update, best of three. Players have a chance. To, okay. Okay, so required wins reduced to four. Cool, so the gauntlet doesn't take forever. So you have to win. You'd play a best of three match. Okay, so you base you have your you you so it's like the sync uh, like the other version like where you you uh, have a lineup of three decks and you have to win two out of the three. And once you win with a deck, you can't play with it again. We have friend spectate, some expedition changes, and some uh, miscellaneous changes and bug fixes. So there we go. That is balance patch 114. Pretty exciting stuff overall. Very, uh, very happy with all the, all the changes overall. Um, yeah, I think that this, this was a good balance patch, and uh, yeah, just gonna makes you know keeps making the game more fun and more balanced. I think they they're gonna continue. To are you know, continuing to do a, a very good job. And I think this is going to just help the game. It should be pretty exciting. And we'll have this tomorrow. So it looks like tomorrow we're going to have to play some Shivana and some Vladimir and some Tarek. Yeah, we'll have to do that tomorrow. But, but anyway, those of y'all watching later on YouTube, of course, hit that like button. Leave all those comments. Let me know what you think about like all the stuff that we were discussing with the different changes. What are your favorite changes? Which one, you know, So which ones do you like? Which ones do you not like? What do you want to see them do? Um, what are you excited to play after this? That's something I want to hear. Like, what what kind of decks do you want me to play right after this? Um, yeah, all that kind of stuff. All right, but anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.